Thanks for watching. Are imaginary numbers a part of nature? Let's find out with quantum mechanics. My name is Jello and I run a channel called Z Physics and this video is a collaboration with the amazing Dr. Payam. This quantity known as the wave function is a function of both position and time and it's used in quantum mechanics to predict the values of important quantities such as the momentum, the energy or the position of the particles. Now is this quantity here really real or complex. What is the equation that actually governs this quantity? In the early 20th century, Albert Einstein himself postulated that the energy of a photon is given by a multiple of Planck's constant h bar multiplied by omega, where omega is the angular frequency. Additionally, physicists were discovering that particles were exhibiting wave-like nature and also classically thought of waves such as light were also exhibiting particle nature. So what we really needed was a wave equation for matter. Normally in physics classes you're given an equation and then you try and solve it. But now what we're going to do is think of a solution and then try and guess the equation for it. Let's assume that psi is a function of position and time is a solution to a general wave equation. We can invoke our imaginary friends, our complex numbers. So e to the i kx, where k is just a wave number. And let's take away omega t, where omega is the angular frequency. What I'm going to do is to take the partial derivative of this wave function with respect to time. Okay, well, let's do that. d psi xt by dt will be equal to, and now let's use the chain rule. We're going to get e to the i kx minus omega t, and then we're going to multiply by the derivative with respect to t of uh, omega. So we're going to get a factor of i minus omega, which is going to give us minus i omega. But hang on a minute. We already know that Einstein said that the energy of the photon is equal to h times omega. So we could just rearrange this equation for omega and we're going to get that omega, let's make that omega look more like omega, is just equal to e over h bar. So we can take this expression and we can sub that into here. Now what we're going to get is that d psi, the function of x and t by dt, is equal to minus i. And rather than omega, I'm going to write the energy over h bar, and then I get a factor of e to the i k x minus omega t. What we're going to get is h bar over minus i d psi x of t, partial derivative with respect to t, is equal to e raised, multiplied by e to the i k x minus omega t i h bar d psi of x of t by dt is equal to the energy of psi x t. And this here is the time dependent Schrodinger equation. Just have a look at how amazing this is. We have an equation that governs the motion and the behavior of electrons and protons and subatomic particles. And this equation involves the square root of minus one. This number that was invented originally just to solve cubic and quadratic equations makes its way into some of the governing equations of nature, which is 
absolutely fantastic. Just think about how amazing this is. The governing equations of particles involves the square root of minus one. Even further still, this complex quantity known as the wave function, well, it's got to be complex. It needs to have an imaginary part because if the left-hand side of this equation contains an imaginary part, then the right-hand side will also need to contain an imaginary part. And I find this incredible. In physics, we often use imaginary numbers for things such as rotations or simply for the convenience of e to the i k x. However, if we differentiate it twice, we often get rid of the imaginary factor, but not this time. It seems to be an intrinsic part of nature. And if we want to know quantities such as the momentum, the state of a particle, we need to consider the complex plane. In fact, I mean, if we have a look at a free particle, which is traveling freely through space, you can imagine how the wave function of uh, this particle is evolving through the complex plane and then we can use this equation to determine the particle's uh, momentum or other quantities if we need to. Absolutely incredible. I would like to thank Dr. Payam one more time for this collaboration. This place is an amazing channel to learn some very interesting mathematics from an amazing mathematician. If you are interested in physics as well, feel free to have a browse from my channel. Thank you very much for watching.